Good color grading can really make your drone footage shine. So we're gonna cover some concepts here to get your drone footage looking that a little bit better and help you stand out from the crowd. Hello, I'm Stuart Carroll and welcome to Drone Film Guide, the channel where we learn to fly like filmmakers. Color grading is such a popular topic, it's an important thing, it can really be the finishing gloss on your otherwise fantastic drone footage. But did you hear what I said there, your otherwise fantastic drone footage? The footage already has to be fantastic before you put a color grade on it. So let's jump straight in to our first color grading tip. This is a bit like going back to school, you're not going to like me for this, but the first tip is Get it right in camera first. Get everything you can as perfect as possible on the day itself because color grading and color correction for that matter is not necessarily going to save you if you don't get your filmmaking principles right first up. Color correction and then color grading, generally speaking, is a destructive process. So if you massively overexpose a shot because you've pointed your drone at the sun and everything's blown out and you weren't looking properly on your monitor at the histogram and you thought it was okay, the chances are, given the drones that you and I are using, you're not going to be able to recover those highlights in post. It's going to be blown out. If you massively underexpose, yes, you can raise the shadows a little bit in post-production, but it's probably going to desaturate your image. You're probably going to introduce some noise into your shadows. So you you need to get the basics of drone cinematography down before you even think about color grading. Color grading is a gloss, it's a finishing touch, it's not a goal in itself and it's certainly not a solution to your problems. It just so happens that Alina and I have an 8 hour drone cinematography masterclass that you may or may not be aware of. Check out the link in the description below, there's a discount embedded in the code if you are sufficiently interested. We take you from drone owner to drone pilot to drone cinematographer and it's a really immersive, enjoyable, cinematic experience. So check out the link there and then we can get back into talking about colour grading. The second concept I want you to understand is that you do your colour corrections first and your colour grade second. Colour correction relates to changing your contrast. So let's say you want to boost the highlights, darken the shadows a little bit, just give the image a little bit more punch compared with how it came out the camera. You might want to increase your saturation just to increase the vibrance of the colours. You might want to change the white balance because you had the kind of incorrect white balance dialed in and those dusky shots are coming up a little bit blue. So you remove a little bit of blue from the mid-tones, let's say, so the grass looks a little bit more green instead of blue. Those are colour corrections. You're kind of fixing problems essentially. So that gives you a nice even balanced shot based on some fairly kind of objective standards that you can then colour grade. Now the colour grade is where all the fun comes in, the look up tables, the blue in the shadows, the orange in the mid-tones, all that kind of stuff. That's your colour grade but you can't really do that unless you have a nice starting point. As we said your very first starting point is producing good footage in the first place, you then might want to tweak it with some colour correction and then you get onto your colour grade. Third concept, you want to pick a grade and stick to it. You need uniformity throughout your piece of work and this is particularly important when you're mixing drone footage with ground camera work for example because the settings won't necessarily be the same on your drone as they are on your ground camera. It could be two completely different manufacturers, in all likelihood they will be. Even if you're just mixing drone footage shots, you want to have some kind of consistency. You want your whites to be at the same kind of level. So you want your whites to be white. Or let's say you're going for some moody, stylish thing with greyish whites or whatever. You want that to be uniform from shot to shot. You don't want to see the first shot as this really nice warm shot with kind of reds in your mid-tones and then the next shot is kind of icy blue and everything's very cold. That's not going to make much sense unless there's a storytelling reason to do so. so once you've made a judgement on what kind of grade and what kind of look you're going for, stick with it across your entire piece of work. The fourth concept I want you to have in your mind when you're grading your footage is that you need to grade for your subject. Now what do I mean by that? So you've got a subject in your shot, let's say. The classic example would be a person. We all have a rough idea of what colour my skin tones should be. So let's say this was shot on a drone right now. I could have put the coolest grade on this. It would be so, you know, stylish and whatnot. And I think it's really cool. But if my face is purple, that's going to be a little bit tricky for the viewer to accept as realistic. And generally speaking, unless we're going for some highly stylized 
music video or something like that, you're going to want the skin tones to look realistic or you're going to want your footage to look believable. So when you're grading, play around with your shadows, your highlights, all that kind of stuff, mess about with the colours, but keep in mind that especially if there's a subject in there, be it a person, an animal, some kind of inanimate object that you've got a rough idea what the colour should be, try and use that as the benchmark to stop you going a little bit too off at a tangent with your colour grading. Concept number five, don't overdo your grade. It's very, very difficult when you get into colour grading to see the world objectively. You sit in front of the computer for hours on end, playing around with shadows, playing around with midtones. You need to step away from that computer and come back and see it with fresh eyes. Because I tell you what, over the years I've done something that I think is really cool, stepped away, come back and gone, what was I thinking? On one hand, there's no rights or wrongs in terms of colour grading. It's a stylistic approach. Find your own style, emulate others, look at Hollywood and see what they do. But on the other hand, there are some kind of, you know, boundaries that you don't want to cross. For example, contrast and saturation. Now, just to break it down for you, contrast, we're talking about the difference between the highlights and the shadows. Now, a classic mistake is to crank up the contrast so much that you have these blown out highlights and ultra crushed shadows. That just really doesn't look professional. That's a bit of a giveaway that you're not totally on top of what you're doing there. Saturation is another one. It's very tempting just to crank the saturation up so everything is super vivid and kind of eye-bleedingly bright because you just think this is great, this is so much fun, look how green the grass is. Again, you don't want to overcook that one because it can look a little bit silly and unprofessional. If you start adding colours in again, kind of really related to the previous point, you start messing about too much with subject skin tones or other things in the image that um, the, kind of the viewer already has a perception of what that colour should be and again it could look a little bit amateurish. So by all means get stuck in and have some fun, but step away, come back and the chances are, especially if you're getting started on all of this, you're going to want to tone back those adjustments that you just made. The sixth thing that's going to help you with your colour corrections and your colour grades is using the tools within your editing software that give you an objective measure of where you are with your colours. Using the histogram and waveform to give you a sense of where your exposure is is invaluable and also there are scopes that help you get some kind of understanding of the level of saturation within the image. I'm not going to get into that in too much detail here but Check out some of our previous work and find out more about your particular piece of software as to how you can use your histogram, waveform and scopes to really standardise your process and make sure that it's not your eyesight or the brightness of your computer monitor that's influencing your grade. Finally, tip number seven, consider using lookup tables to give you well-filmed and well-colour corrected footage that final grade, that polish that gives it the look, that kind of cinematic feel, or whatever it is you're going for. But you really do have to understand that uh, these are not kind of magic bullets that can correct inadequacies in your cinematography. So as I say, coming back to the original point in this whole video, get on top of that and obviously check out our masterclass <laughs> so that you really know what you're doing because you're going to be a little bit disappointed if you go out and buy someone's presets or someone's lookup tables, slap them on top of your poorly shot footage and figure out that, well, that was a big fat waste of money. And it's not necessarily because the presets or the lookup tables, the LUTs weren't any good, it's just because that's not really what they're intended for. They're a finishing gloss on an already pretty well crafted and well lensed piece of work. So there you have it folks, seven tips to get you going on your colour grading. I've tried to keep it short, I've tried to keep it punchy and YouTube friendly. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Do you have any other tips? Uh, check us out on Instagram. We've got quite a cool Instagram page going on. We're very, very busy with our other businesses over summer. So we're putting up some shots and behind the scenes and slightly different content if you're on Instagram and so inclined. Don't forget to check out our masterclass. As I said, subscribe to the channel. As always, keep in touch and we will see you next time here on Drone Film Guide.